everybody. My name is Ryan Patterson, and I am an, a pro, an associate program manager here for the Auctioner Health System within the Care Connect 360 program. And with us here today, we have Tony Wood, who is one of our clinical coordinators, Monica Weibel, another clinical coordinator, Angie Ambo, Stephanie Murray, and um, Wendy Craven, who are both in charge of our credentialing process, which we'll kind of get into. Um, we'll go ahead and start with who we are and what we do. Let me go ahead and share my screen. So our PowerPoint today is called Drones and FaceTime and the Future of Healthcare. We'll kind of get into who we are and what we do. This is the Auctioner Care Connect 360 program. Auctioner is a healthcare system here in the Gulf South region. We're located in New Orleans, Louisiana, and we have many different auctioner systems and hospitals that we communicate with down here. And we have many specialized physicians that have um, very niches in what they do when they treat patients of certain patient populations. So the good part about that is that if you live close to New Orleans, you have an array of doctors that can help you with what disease you have. But the downside to it is that if you live in a rural area outside of New Orleans, you have to travel pretty far to get to that doctor, which can be inconvenient and cost a lot of money. Um, we have put together a team that is built and dedicated to providing those physicians um, to you in rural areas through the use of technology. So we have a solutions development department inside of CareConnect 360 that is basically building technology and solutions to bring that doctor to you virtually. We have an entire growth team that uh, expands out into different hospital and clinics all around the region to get those physicians closer to you. We have credentialing team, which is um, basically getting those doctors credentialed at those facilities we have site coordinators that work with those facilities and patients to make sure that the data is qual the data and quality are up to par for telemedicine benchmarks. Service line coordinator, myself, who um, works with those programs and physicians to make sure that those quality metrics are up to par. And then we have our administration team. All those highlighted in red are people that are sitting at our table today who can answer any questions that you have at the end of our presentation. So some key questions that we'll answer today, how can doctors see patients virtually? What tools do you need to see patients virtually? Can doctors prescribe medications to patients virtually? Are video visits compliant? Can doctors see students in schools virtually? And what does the future of telemedicine look like in five years down the road? So first we'll answer the question of what is telehealth? And this video will really help us Take a look at Everything that. seems to be connected these days. Just think, 10 years ago, smartphones didn't exist, and while a select few had GPS, most of us had to use paper maps when taking a trip. Every day, the number of internet users increase, and everyone is more connected. Did you know that you can even connect to a doctor using technology? Telemedicine is a tool that allows patients to connect to physicians securely through the internet. Many different communities can benefit from the use of telemedicine, especially people living in medically underserved areas. Telemedicine provides accessibility to primary care and specialty doctors that may have been out of reach before. For example, meet Jackie, a young girl who lives in a rural area without a pediatrician. Through telemedicine in the school nurse's office, Jackie receives primary care and specialty care without leaving the school. Many people think the cost of telemedicine might not allow them to take part in programs like the one Jackie can at her school. In actuality, Medicaid and private insurance companies pay for telemedicine services the same as if Jackie went to the doctor in person. Her parents would have the same out-of-pocket copay expenses, but don't have to leave work, so it saves them time and money. Plus, Jackie is getting great medical care. Telemedicine can be adapted to fit almost all medical specialties. Primary care, mental and behavioral health care, cardiology, neurology, and a multitude of other specialists are provided via telemedicine. Schools, doctor's offices, urgent care facilities, hospitals, public health departments, and skilled nursing facilities are all starting to offer it. If you are interested in learning more about how to receive health care services via telemedicine, ask your doctor if there are options in your area. 
So that is, in a nutshell, what telemedicine and telehealth is. It's basically connecting your doctor to you, no matter if you're a hundred or thousands of miles away through the power of the internet. So this is how we use telemedicine here at Oxner. We um, basically can use it through computers, tablets, smartphones, and we also have plug and play technology that allow us to um, basically hear things from the patient or see things that we would be able to do in person. So when we use telemedicine, we have to make sure that the care that we're providing that patient is just as good as being in the room with that patient. And we can um, with the use of these technologies. So we have a stethoscope. We have what we call a JEDMED camera with many different attachments. We can make it an otoscope to look into the ear. We can put a derm camera if we have to look at a mole or acne. Um, and we use telemedicine in, in a, an array of programs and the use of different physicians. Here at Auctioner, we use t the technology of Cisco Jabber. It's basically like Skype, but it is HIPAA compliant. It's secure and it's never recorded. Um, and so it's a program that we can use to have live conversations with patients. To the left is our telemedicine cart that we place in hospitals all around the region. At the top of that camera, you'll see, I mean, at the top of the cart, you'll see a camera that has pan, tilt, zoom. It zooms in great. We can even see the pupils of the eyes of the patients that are having stroke. Um, it's a really good technology. We can plug different pieces of equipment into it, depending on what specialty the doctor is. The main use of those carts are for stroke. And a brief you know, lesson about stroke, it's damage to the brain from an interruption of the blood supply. Symptoms of stroke are confusion, trouble speaking, and understanding. Most stroke victims have numbness of the face, arm or leg, headache, um, trouble seeing in both eyes, one eye, and trouble walking, including dizziness. So when, you have, uh, when someone is having a stroke, time is really of the essence. Um, essentially, you only have four hours and 30 minutes from the time that you have a stroke to actually get to a hospital and get treatment. There is a drug that can treat stroke by busting up the clot, and it's called TPA. Now, it's a very dangerous drug, and only certain people can get it. And, um, you know, a lot of the ER physicians around the state do not feel comfortable giving the drug because you have to be the right candidate for that type of drug. So they only trust that a neurologist can really make that decision. When you arrive in an ED for stroke, you really only have 60 minutes from the time that you get there to the time that we make that decision for the drug. So a patient really only has about three hours to get to the ED, and then the emergency department has about one hour to treat you and make sure that you get that drug in time. After you're out of the window for TPA, you cannot receive it. So let's give you an example. This is a map of the state of Louisiana and say these are the neurologists in the state that are housed in these hospitals. But you're having a stroke up here in the top right hand corner of the state. You would have to drive one hour to get to the nearest hospital that could treat you and help you with the drug of TPA. If not, you could live with severe disability or you could even die from this. But there's a telemedicine facility that has one of our carts in their facility that's only 10 minutes away. We can turn that cart on and connect you with a vascular neurologist here at the Auctioner system hundreds of miles away that can treat you, assess you, and give you that drug that can ultimately save your life. So it's really important to have this technology in rural areas all across the country to give those patients the same chance that you would have if you lived here in New Orleans. Essentially, telemedicine has broken down the barrier between specialized doctors and rural patients and replaced it with a cart. So we'll show you what this looks like as far as telestroke goes and give you a patient story from one of our partnering hospitals that used um, the telemedicine cart for uh, stroke. My right side was weak and then ended up losing all of that control on my left side. When I went to get up, I fell. Next thing I know, I hear an ambulance. I remember saying certain things, but it wasn't coming out. 
Mr. Darter went to bed as a young, healthy adult, neurologically normal, and then I woke up devastated. They had told my fiance that if I came out of this, I wouldn't be the same. Nine times out of 10, I would be bedridden. You got a monitor and you got the little camera. It's like they're in the same room with you. But after a stroke occurs, what happens is there's a blockage of blood flow to the brain, and whether that brain will survive depends on two things. It depends on restoring flow, but also in time. We lose millions of neurons every minute after a stroke. So the sooner we can treat a patient, the better. This telestroke system can bring a stroke neurologist to the bedside within minutes. And uh, we make these decisions very, very quickly, whether they're candidates for the IV TPA therapy or whether they are a candidate for an intervention. And if they are a candidate for an intervention, which is only done at Oxford Medical Center, they are transported as quickly as possible. The clot that was causing his stroke was able to be removed from his brain and that basically reversed the symptoms of his stroke and that's nothing short of a miraculous really when you think about just 10 15 years ago we had absolutely no treatment for stroke that someone with as significant of a deficit can come into the hospital that impaired and then by the next morning be basically normal. This is partnership at its very best and I think this is this is what hospitals should be about working at the maximum of their abilities in absolute concert with each other and I think this is just what we're here to do for each other. The immediate consultations, transfers, is seamless and that is what this partnership has allowed us to do for our community and our patient. Higher level of care, higher safety, better outcomes. I'm definitely lucky. 36 hours, if that, I was back to normal. I feel 100%. So that's one of the success stories through the Ochsner Telestroke program. Um, it's truly, it's really cool to see that a patient at a rural facility was able to get the same amount of care that they would here in New Orleans. So this is what our network looked about a year ago as far as the hospitals. You'll see that Ochsner logo kind of in the bottom right hand corner. And then those are all of the facilities that we had about a year ago for stroke. And this is what our network looks like now. So we're vastly expanding. There are many hospitals within our network that have multiple services, not just stroke, but we have all of those dots on the map that can basically give specialized services to rural patients all across the state. So where we are today, telemedicine, we broke it up into three different categories. Store and forward, which is basically sending files through a cloud to um, read interpretations and send them back to the patients and doctors at rural facilities. Hospital telemedicine, which is our live services. We have stroke, subspecialty coverage in the NICU for babies. We have psychiatry services, peds emergency room services, cardiology for the heart, e-sitter to watch geriatric patients so they don't fall out of the bed, and even critical care services, where here at the Elmwood location where we're at, we actually have a bunker full of nurses and doctors that have many screens that they watch over patients with. And then we also have clinic telemedicine solutions like cardiology, wound, nephrology, and maternal fetal medicine for expecting mothers. This is an idea of what telemedicine looks like around the auctioner system. We'll have, we have that critical care up at the top left-hand corner, stroke at the top uh, middle and right, and at the bottom left is where um, our EICU bunker is, and that's what that looks like. It's nurses and doctors with multiple screens. In the middle bottom, we have um, maternal fetal medicine for an expecting mother. That doctor up in the screen can see the ultrasound and make his determination and talk to the mother. And then also at the bottom right, we have subspecialty coverage in the NICU. So that is our physician seeing um, a baby in the NICU. Also in telemedicine, what most people may know it as today is the fact that the doctor can now see you at home through the use of your laptop, tablet, or smartphone. So let's take a look at how we use telemedicine in the home. Uh... 
What's wrong? I don't feel so good. Well, then you need to go to a doctor. Uh. Mr. Stephenson? Stevenson. How would you describe your symptoms? What is the general area of pain? Does your family have a history of heart disease? Does your family have a history of diabetes? Uh. Man, what seems to be the problem today, Mr. Stevenson? I'm feeling a little stuffed up. Uh-huh. I'm experiencing... Uh -huh. Stop day at 3 o'clock is early at 2.45 this late, room 6 and 7. Follow these instructions and if it doesn't clear up in a week, you should come back and we'll do this all over again. Uh. I don't like going to the doctor. It's a hassle. It's hard to find a doctor that's right. It's hard to schedule an appointment. It's hard to take time away from your life to get there. And it turns out, about half of doctor visits can be done online without being there in person. <laughs> I know, right? Well, now you can see a doctor without going to a doctor's office with the help of your smartphone or computer and American Well. You can log in or use the app to see doctors who are available and connect by video, phone, or chat. Hi, Alan. A few minutes later, I've got my diagnosis and my instructions for treatment. I can see a doctor and start getting better without leaving my home. I don't even need to get up. And that's great. American Well. The doctor will see you now. That's an example of how the doctor can now see you at home. Um, the doctor can prescribe medications that um, basically can help you with your infection, antibiotics, um, the only medications that a doctor cannot prescribe with video visits from home are any type of narcotic medications. The doctor can also see you now at school, and we have a little video on how they use this um, program in South Carolina. It's very, very cool that we have like a doctor on a TV, by like, online. I feel like I'm video chatting with somebody famous. School-based telehealth is a service provided through MUSC that serves children in rural and underserved areas. In my area in Hemingway, a lot of parents work out of town. They work in Florence, they work on the beach because Myrtle Beach is nearby and it's a large tourist area. So a lot of times when children are at school and they become ill, there's not any recourse by the time the parent gets from wherever they are say it's Myrtle Beach they ride public transportation there so they don't have transportation to come and get their child then the child can be seen by a medical professional at school where they are whenever I get hurt or sick the teachers send me to the nurse and Miss Tina will check at it and see if I need a band-aid or call a parent and if we need to tell the health machine, she'll set it up. The student will come in and for their visit and I will sit them in front of the computer screen. Our medical professional, Kelly Garber, sees my kids and we will connect through Vigio and Vigio is a secure connection and once we connect, Kelly can see us and we can see her. And there are different things. We have a stethoscope and what I hear as I do the exam, Kelly hears also in real time. What I see during the exam, Kelly sees also also in real time and that way she is able to see and diagnose then and there and also write the prescription electronically send the prescription or call the prescription to their pharmacy and all the parent has to do is pick the prescription up it is just like an office visit except for it's virtual yes ma'am I'll describe the telehealth consultation by I think it's cool and I don't have to wait for both 25 minutes in like they do in the doctor's office and um it's, it is better for my mom so she wasn't so she doesn't have to come all the way to my school and take time off of her job being in the rural areas um the closest pediatrician is probably 30 miles away i mean we have a medical office but the closest pediatrician for the children is at least 30 miles away and also, with a lot of parents having to work, I mean, we have, we have to work, you have to go to work. Sometimes it's hard to take off um, days when you have other things, like you might have more than one child. It's hard to take off for illnesses and something. And if they're already at school and, and the nurse can see them for a problem they may have, it could, it could be easier, very beneficial.
The telehealth consultation helps me in my daily life because um, they basically just heal my life, really. They basically heal me a lot and it makes me feel better. So that's an interesting um, example and how we use telemedicine at school. And we do have a few of those um, plug and play equipment here in our telemedicine program. Um, right here at the top right hand corner, this is our stethoscope that we use to listen to the heart. And then this is the JEDMED camera that we were talking about earlier that we'll see a live demonstration with, with Tony. And then it's different plug and play equipment that we use with that camera to kind of get a closer look at the patient. So we've been asked, can you Snapchat your doctor? No, you can't Snapchat your doc, but your doc can actually Snapchat you with your permission. So there are some famous doctors that do use Snapchat. Um, we have doctors that use Snapchat glasses to do surgery. And uh, some of the popular Snapchatting doctors are below, um, including Dr. Miami, Dr. Sulman, um, and Dr. Naomi, who do plastic surgery, and then my wife's favorite, Dr. Pimple Popper, a dermatologist that pops pimples on Snapchat. <laughs> so um, Snapchat's not HIPAA compliant as far as you Snapchatting your doctor. It would be great to ask your doctor um, if they can give you inflammation medicine based on swelling and redness, but it is not HIPAA compliant, and your doc can Snapchat you with your consent um, and your signature for it. So let's talk about the future of healthcare. Um, that question always pops up here in the uh, Oxnard system. And we came across something very interesting the other day. Um, a school for uh, medicine out in Mississippi, William Carey University, actually developed a drone that can bring care packages to you in complex situations. So say, for instance, you're out hiking and an ambulance cannot get to you um, very quickly they can actually deploy a drone that can give you safety materials that can help um, your friend in times of need. So let's see their vision and what they um, dream of for the future of telemedicine. Clearing. What now? Sir, your drone will be approaching momentarily. I see it. Retrieve the kit, deliver it to the patient, and a medical personnel will walk you through the next steps. friends having some shortness of breath? My friend's been stung. He can't breathe. His lips are swollen. What do I do? Can you turn the camera toward your friends so that I can see them? Your friend's having a severe allergic reaction. If you would, take the epinephrine pen out of the box and follow the instructions. Place injector against stutter thigh. Press firmly and hold. Five, four, Three, two, one. Injection complete. So that's the hero drone that was created by students at the William Carey University. Um, although I'm pretty sure Monica, our nurse, wouldn't recommend you uh, putting an EpiPen in that vigorous, but pretty well. Um, they have also developed a drone that can help heart attack patients and even drones that can help in critical situations that, um, you know, police or ambulance can't get to right away. So it's pretty cool and it's uh, something to definitely look at. They actually just got a really big grant to fund that project. So 
drones really could be the future of healthcare. I want to also talk a little bit about the partnership between Apple and Auctioner. We have that website, apple.co slash auctioner, if you guys want to take a look at it. But it's a partnership between Apple and Auctioner that monitors patients at home. That way we can keep them out of the hospital. For chronic diseases like hypertension, diabetes management, and more, we can use technology to monitor patients every single day rather than just those few times that they actually go to the doctor. That really will help them in their diet, their exercise, and in their health. So this is a look at the Apple website um, in partnership with Auctioner, and I want to show you how we use this technology to monitor patients at home. The most common chronic disease in the United States is hypertension or high blood pressure. It's about 30% of the adults in the U.S. It's a big problem. If we're going to be successful in managing chronic disease, we need to be getting continuous data from patients so that we can monitor them and course correct. We've created a new program monitoring patients' blood pressure in their home using an iPhone and the health app, and we've been able to dramatically improve how many people get under control in a short period of time. I was uh, diagnosed with uh, borderline hypertension about 25 years ago. They call it a silent disease because you, you don't feel anything. And it was a complete surprise to me. I, I had no idea what it was or, or what it meant. So I went to enroll in this hypertension monitoring program. Hi, Andreas. How Hi, are Dr. you? Shah. How are you? It starts with a series of questionnaires that tell us a little bit about the physical activity levels, their sodium consumption, other factors that play a role in high blood pressure. The next step is we give them what we call a prescription, although it's really tongue-in-cheek prescription, to go to the OBAR, which is a wonderful place where patients can look at apps on an iPad that might be beneficial to them. They get technology set up from a healthcare perspective. The OBAR helped me set up the Bluetooth blood pressure cuff, synchronize it to the health app on my iPhone, and then also my Apple Watch. Then we enable my chart to allow the data to come back seamlessly directly into our EMR, our electronic medical record system. It will come to us all the information. Before, it was the occasional visit to the doctor, and then it was kind of disheartening not knowing what happened between that time when you visited the doctor and the next visit. Now, my health information is available to my physician on almost a daily basis. Hi, Mr. Rubiano. Back at the hospital, we created a dashboard to display the patient-generated health data in a user-friendly way for the care team to be able to rack accordingly. We're able to communicate with patients on a real-time basis, provide feedback to them, as well as reports to the physician. This program has made me very aware of the things that are important for my health. Now that I have this ability to visualize what's going on with my activities, my blood pressure, my heart rate, with my weight even, I am able to do things about it. That's quite empowering. Using iOS, using Apple Watch, using Health App, we've had a dramatic effect on health outcomes in patients with high blood pressure. And we see this extending to all forms of chronic disease going forward, like COPD, asthma, diabetes, high cholesterol, even arthritis. We think this is transformative. It's much more powerful than just any single drug that we can prescribe. So that is the power of Auctioner teaming up with Apple to transform patient care. Let's jump back into the presentation. So now we'll go ahead and do a telehealth demo where we'll um, go ahead and show you the equipment that we use. We will dial into our telemedicine demo room that has mannequins in it. And we will use the GEDMED camera to go into a small area for the incubator. The incubator has small openings right here that we can stick this camera into to get a closer look at babies and our NICU program. So I'm going to jump out of the PowerPoint log into my Cisco Jabber and give a call to our telemedicine demo cart to show you what the physician does whenever they um, log into it. So they'll get on just similar to Skype. They'll use their body list and pick what hospital they need to call. They'll go ahead and call into it. And there we are. There's Tony, one of our nurses. And um, she's going to show us what the GEDMED camera can do inside of that incubator to take a closer look at the patient. So
So it can fit in those small areas. She can even zoom in to that patient and we can get a really close look at the patient. We use this for dermatology. We use this for NICU. And um, even if they, she needed to look into the patient's ear, she has um, a little add-on that can do that as well. So Tony, let's put it um, on the full screen and then I will show the, I'll show everybody how we can pan, tilt, and zoom the camera to get a closer look at the patient. So the doctor has the option to click these arrows right here. Can move this around. And it's got a really good zoom on this camera. So if a doctor needed to assess a stroke patient, they can zoom right into the patient, have a conversation with them. Looks like we have a little bit of facial droop going on there. And they can zoom out. If they need to read vitals, they can zoom in and look at the vitals. Or if they even just need to talk to a family member in the room, <laughs> they can zoom in and talk to the family member. So this cart can do a lot. Um, that JEDMED camera that's in Tony's hand right there um, is just one of the plug and play equipment that we use. We have uh, stethoscopes and more that we can use to assess those patients. So thank you for that, Tony. We appreciate it. Once they're done, they just hang up the call and they're good to go. They've seen their patient. Um, so now what we'll do is we will go ahead and open up. If anyone has any questions for our team, um, we have many nurses in the room that can answer medical questions. Um, and then we just have some administrative people in the room. If you have any questions about the business side of telemedicine or, um, you know, just what we do as a whole from the oxygen system. <laughs> with the drone and how the patient was in the middle of the woods if you you're without service how can the doctor help you and tell you what to do so we researched that and it looks like those drones are running off of satellite and gps rather than the internet which makes them available to actually fly them in rural areas okay so are y'all working with telecommunications companies as well the the vendor that we use is Cisco, and then we partner with an integrator um, who we're currently switching over to an integrator called Carousel that we use that's basically like our eyes and ears on the ground that go assess those carts if there's any issues. So what about AT&T? Are they involved in this in any way or Verizon or any of those? No, some telehealth networks are built off of cellular network. Ours are actually built off of wireless networks in the um, hospitals. So the state of Mississippi actually does partner with AT&T and Verizon. But in the state of Louisiana, we don't, um, we don't partner with a cellular communicator. We partner with more of what the hospital sites use as their uh, boots on the ground wireless inside of the hospital. Okay. Uh, Ryan, there are, there's one question that I got. It asks, can I use the service at home? So for the auction system, we're piloting the home telemedicine internally with auction employees. And we're hoping by the end of this year, we'll be able to roll it out to the iPad and mobile devices through your My Auctioner account. How does uh, HIPAA affect this? Good question. So HIPAA requires you, if you are using telemedicine, a few things have to be in place. One, the doctor has to be in a room that um, has doors and that no one can hear your conversation, which is extremely important. And then two, it cannot be a recorded line. So you can only use live telemedicine, live talking, and the video cannot be recorded at any time whenever you're using telemedicine. So um, the same thing with the programs. You cannot use Skype. You can't use FaceTime when you're using telemedicine. That's why we use Cisco Jabber. It is a secure line um, through the patient and the doctor. It's airtight. Hackers can't get into it. Just to make sure that what you're telling the doctor is in total co confidence, just like if you were in a doctor's office. So how do we fit in as far as um, educators and students learning tech different things about different technologies how will we help our students to learn about this to be able to become employed in the field? That's really interesting. So this year, we've actually partnered with the, um, with the education department and research to really spread awareness that um, the use of IT in high schools and colleges is really important for industries all across Louisiana. 
Um, and more importantly, we realized that IT really isn't taught in high schools. A lot of our technical institutes were taken away from the Gulf South. So internally within the auctioner system, our department utilizes um, IT employees a lot. And um, a lot of people actually house IT employees inside of their own systems and their own departments. So what we've been trying to do is spread awareness that um, IT is used everywhere these days. Everything is on the computer, the internet. It breaks all the time. And um, it's really important to really develop those um, IT employees early on in high school. Let's put IT in the classrooms in high schools. Let's get them to put their hands on this equipment and start learning it early on because this is the future moving forward. Um, all of our carts are monitored 24-7 by IT employees. If the cart breaks, we try to fix it remotely through IS. And if not, we have to have boots on the ground coverage immediately. Um, it's very important to know that if we did not have IS employees and IT on staff 24-7, that patients would not have the care that they have through our program. Are you able to connect us with uh, IT hiring managers so that we may be able to try to figure out what types of curriculum we need to offer to prepare our students to Absolutely. And I, I'm noticing that the it says C-M-I-N-D-C-C. Is, is this Delgado Community College? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is? Okay. Um, actually, we would love to partner with you guys. We've actually done a little bit of research in what you guys offer in the IT realm, and we've actually been talking about opening up internships on our team for Delgado students. So I'm really glad that you guys joined, and um, we would love to get in contact with you guys. Um, any other questions? Nope. Okay. Well, thank you guys for joining. We appreciate it.